how many trees you planted last year? Last year, just over two million. Right. And we're doubling nearly every year. So I expect to be able to fly again around 2020, 2021, because I've said after 100 million trees, I'll fly again. Okay. We'll wait and we'll watch. We'll, we'll, we'll check the, uh, the air schedules to see when that happens. Why, why planting trees? Everybody's trying to figure out a way of solving global warming. How did you hit upon planting two trillion trees as being the way forward? Well, attending the UN, you know, I did a lot of research and I discovered that there aren't a lot of solutions to climate change that involve, you know, that don't involve us giving up a whole lot of stuff. And I didn't think that was going to happen. So I started to look for a proactive thing. And it turns out that trees make clouds. They have little bacteria that they spray up into the air and, and chemicals that actually coalesce clouds. And, you know, clouds can actually be a reflection, you know, of sunlight. They can be a heat shield. So if you take the equator and you plant enough trees around the equator, you actually can cool the planet down and quite quickly. And this, the amazing thing is that we've done the experiment before. There used to be a trillion trees on Earth and they're now 400 billion. And if you can plant enough, you can actually restore a huge amount of area, like the Sahara Desert used to be a rainforest. And who pays for these trees? Well, we like corporates to pay for trees via their customers. Um, we don't, we, you know, we're not a traditional charity. We, we believe in profit. So while we don't make profit ourselves, what we ask corporates to do is lower their customer acquisition cost by bundling a tree. And that actually works. Uh, we, we call it buy two, get one tree. You save half your ac customer acquisition cost for a fractional investment. And that investment then goes to a village woman somewhere in the equator who's been trained to be an entrepreneur herself yeah. and actually create a food forest where she can get the benefit of the trees, not by cutting them down, but harvesting the crops that come from them. And what kind of companies are we talking about here? I guess these are fast-moving consumer goods companies. This needs to be consumer-facing, effectively, to make it work. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we, we you know, uh, consumed about two trillion cola drinks in the last three years. If you could have added a tree to every one of those, I'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> And what progress are you making in terms of interacting with corporates? We have, I mean, if, if you look at our website, you know, you can see all the logos. We, we've got huge response. People love the, the spirit of the tree. Yeah. So instead of having to cut a tree down and ship it to get value, you can actually just know that it's there and audit it. And then we audit the trees, obviously, and we make sure that they, they continue to grow. And people love to own that. But you need the, the, yeah. Funny enough, I was having a conversation with you previously, and you said the biggest problem right now is actually getting the, the DOD, the Department of Defense, to give you satellite space to figure out how many trees you've actually planted. Well, how to track them over time. Yeah. Because I'd love to give a real-time feed. Yeah. And, and only the DOD has satellites that can look to that level of detail. <laughs> do, do you think you're actually going to achieve the target? I, in all seriousness, you, you've got a lot of corporates on board. You need to have more corporates on board. You need to change the model that they apply to, to dealing with the customer. But do you think you're actually going to make it to that number? Well, <clears throat> we ourselves, as we forest, you know, our target's 100 million to prove yeah. the model out completely. Yeah. I think we, as humanity, have to make it to that number. Right. And, like, what's wrong with planting trees? You know, what's wrong with recreating, recreating forests? Like, I've seen plans out there to, like, you know, atomize sulfur into the atmosphere with bombs to try and cool the planet down. I mean, that, to me, would be like hubris. But to restore what, was, what used to be there, I, I think that's in everyone's interest. And, you know, we have 20 million square kilometers of degraded land right next to several billion potential entrepreneurs. Yeah. It, like, we've created conditions which can make this happen. Why not go to the politicians and say you need this to happen? I, we recently had pictures of Putin planting trees, Xi planting trees, Obama planting trees. These guys know how to plant trees obviously not in the name, same numbers that you're talking about, but why, why address it from a corporate point of view rather than addressing it from a political point of view? Well, because corporates have a, a profit incentive to do it. You know, if, if I'm not talking to the CSR people, I'm talking to, to marketing, branding folks, I'm talking to the people who actually do, you know, mass sales and, and look for every point on everything they can do. Yep. And the relative cost of a tree has so much brand power with it that it's actually profitable. Yep. Whereas governments, they take a long time to organise anything and they don't agree on anything. I mean, you know, the UN climate change process requires consensus. That's 200 countries all agreeing with each other at once about any move they make. OK, let's look, look at the IRO, because I come from Ireland. Who else is in the IRO? Um, India, Iran, Iraq, Israel. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of consensus yeah. there. 
Let's talk about some of your other hats away from the trees. Um, you run an accelerator and you run what I think is a really, for a guy who has small kids, you also, you also run a thing to teach kids how to code. I, a, how do you find time to do all this? And B, I, in terms of uh, almost the interaction between these two stories, like trees, technology, kids, uh, you can also almost draw a line between those fa fairly easily. I, how important is it that, 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 that our kids are getting involved in, in all of these processes? Um, you've got a startup business which runs an accelerator. You've got a, and the Coda Dojo thing with Barclays is, is, looks like a lot of fun. Coda Dojo is a lot of fun. That's the point. Right, you, you want to get people to do stuff, you've got to make it fun. The one word that ties all this together is entrepreneurship. And, you know, John Baptiste invented that word here in London because he saw, as a, a member of the aristocracy, people just grafters, you know, getting on and doing it. And I don't think we give our kids the freedom to just get on and do productive stuff. Yeah. And so Coda Dojo is a place where they can just come, you know, age 5 to 17, sit down, bring their laptop, and actually figure out how to do stuff with computers. Not, not play games, but build games. You know, and We Forest, again, it's like get the engine of We Forest is women becoming entrepreneurial, getting stuff and getting paid for it even. Yeah. And like, as a VC, as a venture capital firm, SOS Ventures has committed ourselves to being the accelerator VC. Why? Because we want to invest when people are really starting up. Because we know that if we give them the right environment, those entrepreneurs do so much better when they see, oh, actually it's about traction, it's about getting stuff done. That is really important. It's the same theme in each place. How easy was it to get Barclays involved? Because basically Coda Jojo, Saturday, was it Saturday or Sunday mornings, in, in, in Barclays banks? Yep. <laughs> Barclays have been fantastically generous. We actually had Coda Dojo at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had, we, we had uh, Prince Andrew there sitting next to kids, you know, all coding together. And, and Barclays attended that and they said, we've got this Digital Eagles campaign. You know, we're really trying to, to, to become a center in, the, in our communities. This is an obvious fit. So actually, it was pretty good getting that relation to, to happen. And they've equipped all their branches with free Wi-Fi. Which right. is just perfect, right? How many of the branches currently run Coda Jojo? Uh, I think we're at 25, 30 branches, and they've pledged, uh, you know, on, uh, on, on Twitter, 1,500 branches. I mean, we can give the UK the most blanket coverage of coding clubs. In, in terms of the accelerator, what kind of businesses are you... Are you uh, we have a lot of companies that come on here that, run the, that come through accelerators or, or are accelerators up the road here. Most of them are software. Yep. You're not focusing on software. No, we, we had a major insight, which is that no one's doing hardware, no one's doing wetware. Yeah. So wetware. Wetware. Just explain <laughs> wetware, because I think I know what you mean, but I think a lot of people, they're, they're talking about Hunter Wellies here or something. <laughs> Indeed. Wetware is, is synthetic biology. It's, it's, it's actually uh, you know, making new stuff with living organisms. Uh, so, for instance, we had a team in the first uh, Indie Bio in Cork that actually uh, created milk proteins from yeast. So they're, they're actually building vegan milk, uh, which wow. is really cool. <laughs> if you're and, a vegan. And then we have a program in, in Shenzhen in China called Hack Accelerator, where teams come from all over the world yep. to go to this program. Because why? Because we sat it next to all of the different hardware manufacturers that you could ever want to yep. build your gadget. Bill, lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much, Lau, From WeForest, amongst other things.